Hello, I'm Richard, and in this video, we're going to replace the clutch on this 1989 Honda Civic hatchback. Now, even though what we're going to do is specific to this vehicle, it has the application in other vehicles that are front-wheel drive, front-engine vehicles. So anyway, uh, stay with us as we go through the complete process of replacing the clutch on this Honda Civic. This vehicle has a 1.5 liter, 16 valve, single overhead cam engine in it with the manual 5-speed transmission. Here's a diagram of the overall clutch components from the clutch pedal to the uh, clutch itself. So the first thing we want to do, as with a lot of projects on your vehicle, is we're going to disconnect the negative battery uh, cable. But in this case, just because it's going to make it easier down the road for us, uh, we're going to remove the entire battery from its position right here. Just gives us a little better access and lighting to what uh, we're going to be doing in a few moments. With the battery removed, we can now see the um, clutch adjustment and it opens up this area for ease of access and let some lighting in when we're working on the bottom side. And the next thing we want to do after we've removed the battery is we're going to jack up the front end of the vehicle and using jack stands support it so that the front wheels are off the ground. And then we're going to remove the wheel on the passenger side next. So we've removed the wheel on the passenger side and next we're going to drain the fluid from the transaxle. The drain plug is located on the passenger side of the transaxle. Down at the bottom you can see the wrench hanging off of it. Let me go for another angle here real quick just to show you. So that's the bottom of the transaxle. It's kind of um, in front of the center position. More easily seen from the wheel well here. Okay, so we're going to remove that plug and drain the fluid. All right, this is the bolt that uh, goes in the transaxle drain, and you can see it's a square shot here. This just happens to be the size of a 3 8 inch drive. So just use a short 3 8 extension on your 3 8 inch drive uh, ratchet to remove it. And once it's drained, you can replace the, the bolt back in the transmission and torque it down. Next, we're going to want to remove the shift rod and the torque rod. The torque rod has a nut, or I'm sorry, a bolt on it that uh, can be removed with a 12 millimeter uh, combination wrench. And then the shift rod, there's a little clip that has to be removed. Once the clip is removed, then this pin can be slid out and that will disconnect the linkage from the transaxle. So here's a shot of the clip on the shift rod. And you can see the rubber boot right there. So once that clip is removed, then you can pop that pin out. Here's a shot of the pin. Now, 
one of the things that can be an issue when you're working on this area of the vehicle is, you know, there could be oil and grease uh, around there. It's always best to clean that off so as you don't contaminate things, especially when uh, reinstalling. Next, we're going to remove the clutch um, linkage here where it attaches to the transaxle. And to do that, first we're going to loosen the clutch adjusting uh, knob here. We'll loosen that so we can remove it from the uh, clutch activation arm down below. And then we can remove these bolts here to remove this bracketry. Here's uh, a shot of the clutch adjusting net. And we'll go through that procedure. Here's a shot with the clutch linkage removed. And you notice I stuck the bolts back in the holes. That's so that I can easily, you know, find the bolts when I'm done. But also that it's the right bolts that go back for that particular um, component. So whenever possible, that's the way I recommend you do it. Otherwise, you can... Uh, you know, label them, but always clean and um, and keep track of your your hardware. All right, here's a pointer for getting the pin out of the uh, shift linkage. We're using a piece of quarter inch uh, square stock that we can reach down and then drive that pin down and then once it comes through the bottom we use a piece of uh, use a pair of vice grips to remove it the rest of the way okay. next we want to remove the starter which is just on top of the transaxle and the bell housing here, uh, you'll see the lower radiator hose comes across over the top of it. So there's a couple bolts that hold that in place, remove that. Also, we want to remove the speedometer cable. There's two bolts that hold the starter on. You must remember to remove all of the um, wiring, best to label them, remove the wiring from the solenoid before unbolting the starter motor and that takes a 14 millimeter socket you'll find that the bottom bolt is a little more of a challenge than the top one but it's very hard to see but it's on the back side here the rear engine mount and here's the uh, um, passenger side, inside, constant velocity joint, then your mount, then on the other side of this mount, you'll see this cable, it goes up through the firewall, that's your speedometer cable. Also we want to remove any electrical connections to the um, transmission, like your uh, neutral safety switch, and we'll show you that in a moment. All right, this is the end of the speedometer cable. And so to remove it, you're going to want to lift up the boot right here, which will expose this little clip. You remove the clip, and the cable will slide out, up and out. Here's the electrical connections. I was talking about it, uh, it's right here on top so you follow that and you can see where they connect right here once you disconnect that this will all go with the transaxle that will stay with the uh, the engine side next we're going to really remove the axle nut right here this is the 
passenger side of the vehicle where we removed the wheel earlier. We're going to need to remove this nut next. When removing the uh, drive axle nut, you'll need to support the hub so that it doesn't rotate on you. And those things are on there pretty good, so you'll need a good size breaker bar. We used a uh, impact wrench and zipped it off uh, very quickly. I'm not sure the size of the net in millimeters, but uh, a one and a quarter inch socket fits it perfectly. Next, we remove the damper fork from the lower control arm and from the uh, strut. Okay, it's not quite that easy, but we had already unbolted it. Here's a shot of the lower suspension components and um, with their uh, names. And so we disconnected and removed this piece right here. Okay. That was our damper fork, number seven. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the nut right here on this lower ball joint so that we can uh, lower this um, lower arm off. Now you can buy a puller for those. Sometimes you can put a nut on there and give it a tap and wrap them loose. Um, just going to be depending on how much uh, grief your car is going to give you. But, um, uh, but you can buy a ball joint um, puller for, for pulling the, that um, junction loose right there. Here's a shot of a uh, ball joint separator tool so you can get an idea how they work. Once you undo the, uh, the net and pull the uh, ball joint loose, you can then tilt the um, brake and, and hub and so forth assembly away from the constant velocity joint and slide the axle out. And once you do that, you can remove the inner constant velocity joint. The inner constant velocity joint can be removed by using a large screwdriver or pry bar and prying between the transaxle and the constant velocity joint. The axle and joint are held to the transaxle using a clip, a little spring clip, which should be replaced. Next, we're supporting the uh, inboard side of the engine with a floor jack. We're using a, a board, piece of wood here, to uh, spread the weight so we don't damage the um, oil pan. But we need to support that side of the engine. The other side is supported by a motor mount. But we're going to remove all the mounts that support the other side of the engine, which is basically supported by the transaxle. We're going to remove all those mounts. So next what we're going to do is we're going to put a uh, transmission jack underneath the transaxle to support it. And we're going to do that uh, after we remove all the um, um, transaxle mounts. But we have to do that after we remove the mounts and before we start unbolting it from the engine. Here's what, what this looks like disassembled now.
with the, uh, there's the inner portion, it's the transaxle side. So we've got the axle out, we've got the uh, engine supported, and now we're going to remove the transaxle mounts. And there's several of them. Here's a front one right there. See another angle of it. Here it is. So there's a, a bolt on top and bottom. You gotta remember when you're removing things, keep in mind that we want to be able to move the transaxle towards the outer, you know, towards the uh, passenger side of the car so we can clear the splines on the input shaft. So there's a couple different mounts. Here's a side mount over here. And where it mounts on the transaxle. Kind of darken the hole there. But anyway, just you look around, you'll see all the points. Here's one in the back, rear mount. Kind of the hose in the way there. But you can see and that so that's on the back side. See against the firewall there, that's where we're accessing it. Okay, so that's what we're going to remove next. After the, like I said, after the engine is supported, we can then remove all those mounts. All right, we've uh, removed all of the um, motor and transmission mounts. Well, not motor mounts, but the mounts to the transmission or the transaxle so that we can remove it. We now have a jack, a transmission jack, underneath the transmission to support it. So next we'll be removing the bolts that hold the transaxle to the block. All right, what you're looking at now is the transaxle bell housing on the left here, which has been separated from the engine block. You can see the splines of the clutch right there, or not the splines, but the um, fingers of the clutch. So then you're going to want to uh, loosen the retaining bolts to hold the pressure plate to the flywheel and just loosen them a little bit at a time so that spring pressure is released equally around the uh, you know parameter and then slowly once there's no more tension on it then you can remove all the bolts be careful that um, you don't drop that the, the pressure plate is fairly heavy now, if you're going to um, reuse the pressure plate, make sure you mark the pressure plate and flywheel indexed to one another so that when you put it back, it goes back exactly the way it came off because they are balanced together. So the um, pressure plate in this instance, we're going to be replacing all the clutch components and so we don't need to mark it we're just going to pull it out but as you see we did not have to remove the transaxle from the vehicle we just separated it and tilted it out of the way so that we have access to the uh, the clutch I'll, I'll move the camera and try to give you a little better view here so that's a shot of the transmission or transaxle input shaft you can see the throw out bearing there highly recommend anytime you go this far and go through this much work that you replace the throw out bearing which we're going to be doing in this instance you can see the flywheel here and the clutch we've removed the bolts get another angle okay and that's the clutch 
I'll kind of back out a little bit so you can see things. So you can see the flywheel, the clutch. And so we're going to remove the, uh, the pressure plate and that will then expose our friction disc. And since this clutch is making quite a bit of noise, we'll see what's left of the friction disc. Okay, here's the clutch components removed from the vehicle. When removing the uh, pressure plate, this spring fell out. This is one of the uh, springs that uh, absorbs some of the uh, torque when you're shifting gears so that the gear changes a little smoother. And uh, you can see how this has failed here. This piece was here. And so that's what was causing the noise. We can see that you can see this little bit of different coloration right here. Actually wore a groove right here. Kind of beveled it on the inside edge of the pressure plate. So that's going to be replaced. Both of these components are going to be replaced. We're going to replace the throw out bearing. We'll replace the um, um, we'll replace we will replace the pilot bearing also. And so these are all components that are only accessible when we separate the clutch and the transmission. And so or the um, engine and transaxle. And so we're going to take care of all those things. So once we put it back together, hopefully we don't have to do this again for a long time. Uh, the other thing that we want to do at this point is we want to carefully inspect the flywheel and make sure there's no damage to the flywheel. So here's a shot of the flywheel with the clutch removed. He said you want to carefully inspect it, make sure there's no heat fractures and check and see if it needs to be uh, resurfaced or replaced. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to inspect it. And we'll let you know the verdict on this one. All right, to replace the throw out bearing, you need to remove the 12 millimeter bolt right here and then slide out the, um, the arm, the um, clutch release arm shaft. So we're going to slide that out so that we can pull the um, bearing off the shaft. Then putting the new one back, we want to lightly grease this collar right here, the shaft, and slide it back on. Recommend that whenever you uh, do any work on the clutch, have the transaxle out to replace that. Here's a new one, ready for install. And we'll attach the spring and so forth onto it. That's a new throwout bearing installed. There's the 12 millimeter nut that was or bolt that we talked about and that's torqued to 22 foot pounds. And then using a clutch alignment tool or uh, friction disc alignment tool. We held the friction disc in place with the tool and then installed the pressure plate onto the alignment dowels to sample when there's three alignment dowels and then slowly draw the clutch pressure plate to the flywheel evenly all the way around. So you just do maybe uh, a half rotation 
to a rotation of the bolt. I usually do, you know, across from one another, I have a star pattern, walk it down very slowly, and then torque them to 18 or 19 foot pounds. And that's our clutch installed and our new throughout bearing installed. Next, we're going to put the transaxle back into place. And there's these alignment dowels. There's one. There's a couple of those on either side, front and rear. And so we have to be careful to um, not damage the transmission input shaft or the friction disc splines. So we need to go in, get this all leveled and lined up, and then slowly move the transaxle up against the uh, engine block. Now in doing that, it must fit snugly by itself. Don't force anything. Don't draw it tight using bolts. It should go into place by itself with just moderate effort. You also want to clean the mating surfaces so that the uh, mating surfaces are clean. You can see we're not too far out. We just need to raise the transaxle a little bit slightly rotate it. And as we're doing that, then we have to reinsert the uh, drive shaft on the driver's side. And we can just see it down there in the dark. And we'll bring that back into place. And then, of course, we need to tighten the bolt, install the bolts, and tighten the bolts. And uh, so that's what we're working on next. So, as you're drawing the uh, transaxle to the engine, make sure that you rotate the crankshaft and you do that at the front pulley. Make sure you turn it in a clockwise direction as you're viewing the pulley. Make sure that there's no binding, that the splines are lining up and that it's sliding together smoothly. You want to keep checking that throughout the process to make sure there's no binding. And it should just be able to mate those two uh, components together. The trick is the alignment getting everything level and aligned so it goes straight in. Um, you may have to have the engine tilted uh, down on the uh, passenger side a little bit. Um, but again, the alignment between the transaxle and the engine is what needs to be um, straight. That, that alignment needs to be correct. Then once that's uh, mated together and those bolts are snug and torqued. Uh, those are 17 millimeter um, socket that's used on those bolts and it's 50 foot pounds of torque. And so then you want to jack things back up into position and start attaching the um, mounts. And again, don't snug anything down on the mounts until you have it aligned. All the holes you know, are aligned and the bolts are in. And then you can tighten them all down together. And once your motor mounts are secured in place, then you can reinstall the axle shaft and uh, then the ball joint will go back in place, put the fork back in place, so forth. Just kind of reverse of uh, the removal process and uh, 
torque everything down. Here's the torque specifications. We already gave you some of those, but the uh, the the drive axle nut we didn't. That's 134 foot pounds. Here's uh, a shot of the clutch adjusting nut. And we'll go through that procedure. Here's a diagram showing the clutch free play and the adjustment components. Basically, as you've probably noticed, assembly is just the opposite of disassembly. Um, we need to put the starter back in and connect up the wiring need to connect the wiring for the uh, transaxle that we disconnected uh, before removal we need to replace the um, exhaust piece that we removed from the manifold to the catalytic converter um, we need to again uh, attach the shift linkage put the pin back in place and the clip don't forget the boot um, the torque rod that needs to have the bolt put back in and put back in place so all those things need to be done you can kind of look and see and be reminded on some of them. Some of them are out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So kind of be mindful as you're putting things back together of what else there is that you might be forgetting. Also, you don't want to forget to refill the transaxle with new fluid. It takes 1.9 quarts on this particular model. And also, we'll need to adjust the clutch. And we'll talk about that in greater detail a little bit later. Another item that you don't want to forget to um, reconnect, and that's the uh, speedometer cable. Got to remember to put that back in, put the clip back in place, and slide the boot back down.